this morning as we turn to the Word of God uh, for our second message of the year. You have the title here, Pursuing Holiness. You know, when we begin a new year, many times in churches we are uh, encouraged very strongly to uh, focus on goals. Goals oriented, uh, you know, plans, goals, and uh, things that you want to do, change, and things like that. So, as I was preparing, I'm thinking to go to another direction and present to you another uh, way to begin uh, the, new, the new year. You know, more than a new year, you and I, we, we are running a race. The race of life. We have entered into a walk of faith with God that will last until we will depart the earth and enter into heaven. So that is a much, a much more important uh, preparation than says, I'm planning new goals for 2018. I am planning to redirect my life focus, my goals for my life, for the life of faith, the race that God has set before us. So that's why I think this is better to focus on our holiness than focus on our material goals, what we want to achieve uh, in terms of that. So uh, please allow me to, to present it to you uh, uh, in, in this way. Hallelujah. So I want to go to slide number three and read our text for this morning. Pursue peace with all and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Hallelujah. As we enter this new season of prayer and fasting, I feel to teach on this very important biblical subject that is most neglected or misunderstood as well in a, in a Christian way. It says pursue holiness. Pursue here is means to run swiftly to attain it. To press on to reach the goal. So we, we want holiness in our lives. We need holiness in our lives. And one thing that I came to realize this week is like when we think about holiness I, I see faces of people who Wow, it's going to be hard or something. I don't know how the devil succeeds to do something. He takes something that is a blessing, the strength of our life, the, what should be a motivation leading us to joy in life, and it succeeded through the years to bring into this word another negative meaning discipline, do's and don'ts and uh, you know these kind of things? Is, is that right? This is God speaking to us. The God that loves us knows what we need the most. And He is telling us pursue. Run swiftly. That's what you need this year. Say amen to that. Amen. That's what I need. That's what you need. Uh, uh, go back to the time that you uh, came to Jesus for personally, I remember 1978, 16 of November, I became born again. That's almost 40 years ago already. Can you imagine that? But I remember that at the time of my conversion, holiness and sanctification was talked about. It was very important in our church. Uh, it, it was preached about, it was talked about all the time. Uh, our pastor at the time when I received Jesus was 81 year old. Uneducated, but had experienced a miracle of healing in his life, has given his life to God. Later on his wife told him, you choose your God or me. And she left him. And he remained the man of God that built the church in 1930s. He was a pioneer from the Pentecostal movement coming from Azusa Street that came into Canada. And he was really uneducated, but he knew something about God that many of us, we, we, sh we, sh we should know. And, uh, he knew that we need to be saved. He knew that the Lord is coming again. He knew that we need holiness and we need to be prepared and baptized in the Holy Spirit. These were the four uh, main uh, teaching that he was he was getting a bit old and repeating himself but it was you know when you go, grow old 
and you look at some of the uh, writers of old, of the Christian, that, that influenced Christianity, you will find out that as they grew old, things became more focused. Things that they have rediscovered through their wisdom acquired in life, life experience, and things that they have observed in the world, things that were very essential, very important. So before they left, when they started to write and dictate their instructions, leaving like some sorts of testament to the church of what they have discovered and known about God, they gave us treasures of literatures. And one of the main themes, when you look in the old books of these old holy writers that influenced the, the church history, you will find that holiness was a very, very important theme. But unfortunately, as I said, we have lost the, the sense of joy and what it would uh, really produce in our life uh, through, through a lot of the religion and things like this that we have. So at the time of my conversion, it was the atmosphere in which we came to Jesus and that we were exhorted to, to grow. First of all, I was delivered of my big sins, drugs and a life of darkness. Then later on, bad language followed. And then later on, more deeper character transformation, like probably you experienced in your life. Holiness, sanctification was preached about is what was expected of you, it, we expected it. And I remember as the, the, the young people of the time, I was young at the time, I was 25 years old, uh, it's like we were perfecting holiness in the fear of God. This, this is, this is the, that was the atmosphere of the church. Really focus on God, participating in the church, and it was not out of legalism. You know, sometimes you think you hear the word holiness, you think legalistic, sets of rules, don't do, don't go there, like don't anything like that, uh, don't smile in church, just always remain serious, which is absolutely not true. This is a word that would lead us, you, let, me, let me put it in another way, why is there so many unhappy and discontented Christian today? Maybe we, the answer is right there. We have lost something of the closeness of God. And we will talk a bit about that. So this morning I want you to uh, reject from your mind legalism. Reject of your mind any feeling of fear or the guilt and something like that. I'm not holy enough. What does that mean? I might say that. We're not going there in this way. We are encouraging you to follow the ways of God and the ways of old so that you can be refreshed, so that you can be strong, that you can live the life that God intended for each one of us. Amen? Yeah. We're not talking about legalism. We're talking about being led by the Spirit and living in the joy of the Lord. Slide, next slide, J.C. Riley. And I'm, I'm going to use some of these writers of old to, to talk to you this morning. I have had deep conviction for many years that practical holiness and self-consecration to God are not sufficiently attended to by modern Christians. Would you agree with a statement like this this morning? Yes, yes thank you. He's continuing, which I did not write it, but he says, the immense importance of adorning the doctrines of God our Savior, like in written in Titus 2.10, what, what makes the doctrine of God attractive by our daily habits and tempers have been too much overlooked. You know, you and I, we have this great privilege. By living in holiness, we are making the doctrine of God real, uh, honorable, attractive. But the opposite is true also. When Christians who ought to live in holiness are not living in holiness, they are causing a lot of trouble. They are giving the world excuses for not coming to Christ. Because, oh, you Christians, you know, are so self-righteous, you are so, you know, uh, hypocrites, bunch of hypocrites, you're not living the life, you know, these kind of things, which, which should not be. So, holiness is very important. It adorns and it makes the doctrine of God attractive. He continues in saying, sound doctrine 
which all of us here this morning have. If I ask you, do you believe the Bible? Yes. And uh, let me ask it to you so you can answer me. Do you believe the Bible? Yes. Okay, I knew the answer. Yes, yes. So sound doctrine is useless if it is not accompanied by a holy life. It is worse than useless. It, is, it does positive harm. It, do, it does something negative in, in, this, in this life. So our text today brings up the questions that we must give our attention to. Every Christian, am I pursuing holiness as God intends me to? And this question should always be part of our life. Always. There's not a time in the life of a Christian where we should not live in holiness. Am I right in saying that? I'm taking a break from holiness? Oh, I'm okay, I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm drifting away for a while. Oh, it's not a big deal. My sin is not really a big deal. It does not touch other people's life. Nobody knows about it. No. First, let me make a few distinctions because, the, again, to, to clarify the word uh, holiness, there are three, maybe, definitions or ways to look at holiness biblically. The first one is... Uh, when you believe at Christ, and Christ at salvation, the Bible makes it very clear. You are being made holy. So that's your standing with God. Christ is your redemption, he is just your justification, and he is your sanctification. Already, he has pulled you out, which is separate you from worldly living, living in darkness, and sin, he has pulled you out, he has separated you, which is the definition of holiness, making you distinct, separating you unto himself so that you can live. And Ephesians, it makes it very clear that Christ paid the ransom to make you blameless and holy in his presence. It's clear. He has died to achieve that. So already there is a standing with God that you are in holiness in Christ. Okay? Get it? Number one. Number two. There is what we are going to talk about more this morning, this dimension of holiness, a practical, what the writers of old called practical holiness or personal holiness, a, a walk and the resemblance of the holiness of God, what, tend toward it, go to, toward it. And to look at some scripture, let's, let's look at the, the next verse. The, this verse here talks about this holiness being made holy in Christ when you believe. Unto the church of God, which is in Corinth. Was the church in Corinth perfect? No. no. But still you read that Paul addressed them to them who are sanctified or holy. It, it could be either way here. Made holy. Those who have been declared holy by God by, in Christ Jesus. And called to be or to become, or, you know, they are saints, but there's a progress in that. And it is for all believers through all generation and any place where they uh, call upon the name of Jesus. So that is a standing in Christ. The second verse here talks about the need for your and my personal uh, holiness. For this is the will of God. For you and for me. Your sanctification. So there's a part of sanctification. There's a definition of holiness that is important to me. The way that I live, the way that I walk, that you abstain from sexual immorality is one. Number two, that you deal honestly in business with others. That, that's, that, that continues in this text. And that you keep your control on, under self control, your body under self control. So th there are things under the practice, my practice, or my personal sanctification that I need to not do or do or choose to, to live in a certain way. Number three, to clarify it even more, there is a perfect state of holiness or sanctification which believers will only be able to attain when in their final condition in heaven. Because we will be morally like the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven when we reach the other side. But until that time, we are on a development, a walk, a pursuing 
of the character of Christ, of that transformation, of that uh, being made prepared and ready to live in the holy place called heaven, without which no one will see the Lord. So that is a very important thing. So let's continue. Why is it that personal holiness is often neglected? It is often neglected because, number one, we are, many of us in our generation here, and some churches more than others, we are not conscious of the importance of it. We, we know a little bit about it, we have heard, we, we, we read through pages of the Bible, but we personally are not engaged by it. We are not under that conviction yet, so we neglect it because we are not necessarily aware of its importance. Number two, there's also, when you look at the words, this perversion or this transformation of a positive terminology that God intended into a negative uh, place for us. It's too hard. It demands too much sacrifice, the cost, whatever it is. So it's like non-attainable. It's too hard, like this kind of thing. So we neglect it because we think it's too hard and unattainable, which is uh, another lie of the enemy. Why is personal holiness misunderstood? Because it is presented and practiced often from a human concept, like a series of legalism, from religions, from rules. You know, any time that you see a program on TV, a movie of the past, where they have religious people, let's say a convent or a, an orphanage or, or, or some sort of social uh, gathering somewhere, and you have religious people, they're always narrow-minded, they're always judgmental, they're always angry, they're always pu punitive toward the, 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 the children or whatever. That's the, the picture that the devil has been sending back into our generation, perverting at the same time the beautiful word holiness. Is God's ugly? Is God's punitive? Is God negative? Is God evil? Is God you know, angry and bad? Is that the picture that uh, God is? So why would we think that the imitation of God would be negative? The devil is, is very tricky to, to succeed, to make people believe that. So it is often misunderstood. So this morning I don't want to present to you a formula, do this, 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 and you will be holy. And I don't want also to bring a legalistic teaching to you. But I think the most um, important reason why I believe there is misunderstanding about uh, this terminology of holiness and personal sanctification is that we confuse it with the word perfection. Holiness, perfection. I'm not perfect, so I'm not holy. So we uh, get confused about the terminology. So let me clarify this. Perfection and perfect holiness, it's the highest attribute of God. It's a beautiful attribute. It's what separates God from his creation. He's pure, he's perfect, he's eternal, he's powerful, nothing evil, he's not the one who will tempt us, he will never send us anything bad because he's the creator and he, the protector, the provider and the lover of his creation. So there's nothing evil in him. He is perfect in his nature, which makes him distinct from his creation and separated from his creation. That's why we say this is perfection belongs to God. It is his ultimate attributes, his greatest qualities, beauty is his holiness, the perfect holiness of God. So that's important for us to realize that this morning. So if we are called to pursue holiness, we are called to uh, more and more resemble the beauty that holiness should be reflecting. Let's go back to the ne next slide, slide six, to our, our verse. Pursue peace with all and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Spurgeon makes this point about perfection even clearer. He says this text did not say, pursue perfection of holiness. 
That's not what we are told to, to do because it's already, we're, we're, we're on, we, we would not be able to. So God is not proposing to us something that is unattainable. It's in the Bible. We are encouraged to attain to these things. We're not called to do something that we will feel always guilty and unable to do. That's not how God wants to promise and encourage us and exhort us. God is positive. He says, hey, I have the secret of your happy Christian life, a secret of your victory, the secret of how you should be walking the Christian life till the time when you will be, you will be ready if you, if you follow this one principle, pursue holiness. That's the greatest advice, the greatest word of encouragement for all of us. So Spurgeon says, he did not say pursue perfection of holiness, it says pursue holiness, pursue personal sanctification, the process by which you and I become progressively more dedicated to God. Because th that term also means separated unto God, separated from evil and filth and anything that is uh, leading us to do evil or to sin against God, separate from this and separate unto God, dedicated, consecrated. You know, sometimes the Bible and the Old Testament and the New Testament use, interchange this, this word holiness. Sometimes it uh, will be more useful to use godliness, Christ-likeness, consecrated, and, and these kind of things. It may be at the time in your life, a small seed, a desire, a, a striving that you have, but the Spirit of God will enable you and it will grow into a tree. Let's go to the next slide. Andrew Murray, one of the revivalists of the past, calls it holy making. That is easy to, for us to understand a bit of terminology like that. Holiness, as we said before, is the highest glory of God. It's, it's the highest attributes of God. So holy making is good for you and for me because it's making you partakers of the nature of God, of His divine nature. That's what it means. We are, it's holy making you and holy making me into these attributes of God. Holy making is the spiritual preparation for meeting the Lord and being at home with Him. Let's be honest here. If I, if I sin, and I know it, but I still, you know, disobey, and, and I, I'm not at home with him, I'm not easily going to, through myself, and if I, I finally go to prayer, oftentimes the prayer without a holy heart is approached more like from guilt point of view, oh Lord, forgive me, forgive me, I sin again, la 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 la. Okay, so it's not like a joyful, oh Lord, I come to you, my Father, I love you, I know you. It's not the same approach. I, I think we understand, we understand that. So it's, 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 it's worth it. It's a spiritual preparation for meeting the Lord, without which no one will see the Lord. No one will be comfortable with the Lord. No, more, no one will be uh, at home with Him. If we want to meet the Lord, this is essential for us. R. A. Tori, the next one. While sanctification is God's work, this is the Holy Spirit. This is Christ who gave us that standing, but it's through the power of the Holy Spirit that we can be transformed. This we know about that. While sanctification is God's work, we have our part in it. Pursue holiness. So it's addressed to you and to me. So it's something that I participate to this sanctifying process, this progressive transformation of me. I must do it. We must make it our life's pursuit. Sanctification is something that we must constantly pursue or desire earnestly. That's important. That's what this text means. Next slide. Jerry Bridges in the pursuit of holiness. The problem with our lack of holiness is because we are not convinced of the deceitfulness of sin. What does sin does to you and to me? It separates us from God. It separates us from the life of God, from the flowing of grace into our lives. It just perverts something. It breaks a communion. It keeps us from living happily with the Lord. Enoch walked with God in intimacy and the Lord 
took him to be with him. That's what we want for our lives. We want to be ready for the, for the rapture. So because we are not convinced of the deceitfulness of sin, what it does, the seriousness of sin, and because we do not have a firm conviction that without holiness, no one will see the Lord. This is not a deep conviction yet in our hearts. So we do not take holiness as a priority in our lives. It cannot be a priority. We're not convinced. We're not there to, to really understand the seriousness of it. Christ saved his people not in their sin, but out from their sin. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Sin always blocks our vision of God. So if we want to see God, we must realize that holiness is a real necessity. The text is very clear. The, all the texts we have looked. Oswald Chambers says, Holiness, not happiness, is the chief end of man. God did not, you know, just bless, 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 happy, happy. Be holy and you will be happy. And we will talk about it a bit later. God used two things to sanctify us. Let's go to slide number 11, 2 Thessalonians 2.13. Brothers and sisters, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you from salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. So you find two things here that are very important. The believing, the active believing, not the passive uh, doctrinal knowledge, but the believing, the active believing in the truth, the truth that sets us free, the truth that gives us a direction, the truth that points us to our sin, that uh, requires us to, to be challenged and to change, and the power of the Holy Spirit, the sanctification by the Holy Spirit. We need the working of both the Word and the Spirit all the days of our lives. So as we enter this week of praying and fasting, let's remember that. Bring your word with you every day. Make sure that you go to the word, that, that you feed yourself, and let the Holy Spirit pray. Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, enable me, empower me. Holy Spirit, sanctify me. Let's pray this prayer. Slide number 12. How can we pursue personal holiness? 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness and the fear of God. 2 Timothy 2.21 Therefore, you see if the two verses starts with therefore, so there's something, so we need to pay attention to that. If anyone, you, me, cleanse himself from the later, all these, you know, unworthy things, he or she will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, and we will be prepared, ready to be useful and for, to do the things, the good things, the positive things, the, the, the things that are rewarding, the things that are noble, the things that are useful, the things that bring blessings uh, into our lives and to the life of other people also. Things that will bless our marriage, things that will bless our home, things that will bless our colleagues, because the whole, that's, that's how it works. So we, we separate ourselves from anything that pulls us toward stain. So how can we pursue holiness? We keep ourselves clean. We keep ourselves clean. That's a choice. We have choice to make. We have temptations. We have to say no. The grace of God that appears in this world teaches us to say no to ungodliness and to live uh, self-righteous and soberly minded in this generation. Keep ourselves pure so that we become the vessel of honor. Sanctified. Which means that we are now prepared, ready, to be useful, to be set aside. Uh, I was, uh, another definition, I did not include it in my notes, but the dictionary, the evangelical dictionary of theology was, was uh, giving the, th the definition of this word hagiasmos, that's the word we're talking about, personal holiness, as a being made for what it was made. 
that's that's their definition like uh, there's a better way to say that in other words eyeglasses are holy when they are used for their function okay a pen is uh, sanctified when it is used to write a man and a woman of God are sanctified when they are used for, for, for the divine purpose in which they were designed. They are belonging to God. They are following God. They are dedicated to God. You are being sanctified. That's the evangelical uh, dictionary of theology that was talking like that. So this is very important. One thing that we need to realize as Christian. Okay, Pastor, you talk a lot about sanctification, but we know that in the scriptures I have, we have been justified, we are forgiven, we are born again. Yes, yes, we agree with that. But it doesn't mean that you are not carnal. Is that right? You are born again, but I see a lot of carnality when I look at certain of you, when I look at myself, I, I, we can see carnality. It means that our new life should grow into Christ-likeness. I'm born again. I want to serve God. But there's still carnality there. When we are born again, you and I will experience something at the beginning that you've never known before that existed. Two natures fighting in you. Before you didn't know that, you only had one nature sinful. Now you are born again. You discover something that you had never known before. You have two nature. And they are fighting against one another. Sometimes you get crazy about it. Because you don't know on which side of the fence you are. You know? This is very attractive. And this is very hard. And this is like this and like that. And uh, oh Lord come and rescue us. So, so two natures fighting. There is a daily war between the flesh and the spirit. So when the Bible, when God or the writer of the Bible tells us this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you will abstain from this and this and this. And when it says pursue holiness, it's exactly why. I'm born again. I've been justified. My sin, my past is forgiven. There is no condemnation for those who have been rescued by Christ Jesus. But now, what about now? I'm walking. Here on earth, with my body, with this nature, and there's two nature and us. So that's why I need, it is essential for me to pursue, to desire, to strive for, to seek after, to make it the aim of my life. That's what it means, pursue holiness. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's look at the slide number 13. You have four verses here, and we will conclude with that. This is true pursuing personal sanctification that God prepares us for the glory that He has prepared for us. We know that the goal of all of this is the glory that is coming. Amen? Amen. Hello? You missed, a, you missed a good chance to see a big, big amen because we're talking about the glory that is to come. You are saved by the Spirit making you holy. We read that text before. By your faith in the truth, by believing in the truth. So that you can share in the glory of our Lord Jesus. So we're, that's the importance. 1 Thessalonians 4.3 For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality. Verse 7 God did not call us to live in immorality, but in holiness. Pursue holiness without which no one will see the Lord. So we close with this. There is much more holiness to be attained. Or level, or growth and holiness and much more of heaven to be enjoyed on earth if you walk in holiness if you seek after that you, you want heaven and on earth you know we pray the 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 the, the lord's prayer uh, father in heaven 
and then we give all of his glory, all of his title, hallowed be your name, may your will be done. This is, this is a prayer of holiness. This is the perfect prayer of holiness. You want to, to pray a prayer of holiness? Pray the Lord's Prayer. That's, that's what it tells you to do. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Bring your glory down. Let, let the, the, the beauty of Jesus Christ be seen through me. Uh, use me to perform whatever task that you have for me. This is holiness. This is service. This is separation unto, unto the Lord. So there is more of that. There is more. Actually, I was reading a, a wonderful short text of last night, late. Joshua. Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. I says, wow, that's what I want. That's what I want for this prayer this week, this fasting. Lord, I want you to do wonders among the church in my life. Sanctify yourself, because tomorrow... Wow, let's pray that prayer this week. Let's apply it in, in prayer. Today we pray for tomorrow that God will come and make clean and pursue holiness with that. Why then is holiness so important? Of course, we discuss about it a lot. First of all, because the Word of God says so. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Number two, because this is the great purpose for why Jesus Christ came into this world. Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the word and by his blood. Titus 2.14, God gave, Jesus gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness separate from these wickedness, purify, set apart for himself a people that are, is his very own, eager to do what is good, a sanctified people. Number three, we must be holy because this is the evidence that we have a saving faith. This is an evidence. This is a proof of life. You know, so you see that sometimes in movies. Proof of life. Someone is being kidnapped. You want a proof of life. You want a proof of life? Your holiness is your proof of life. Christ is in you. Is the, is the Spirit working? Do you see signs of the Spirit in you? When the Holy Spirit indwells a person, He imparts new desires and new abilities to please the Lord. Personal holiness is an exhibition. You go to an exhibition, an art exhibition. You want to see display of something beautiful. So personal holiness, your life and sanctification, is the exhibition of the image of Christ that can be observed by others in your private life and the habits of your life and in the character of your life and in the doings of your life. Isn't that wonderful? You are an exhibition of Christ by your holiness. Another reason why. We must be holy because our present happiness depends a lot of it. And that's the, the positive side of holiness. Sin brings misery, broken relationships, selfishness, Right. It, it brings destructions everywhere. It brings regret. You know, sometimes you, you read books, marriage without regrets, live life without regrets. Whenever sin comes in, there is regret. There is catastrophes, disasters, mess, uh, you know, like breaking up of something. So there is a close relationship between sin and sorrow and holiness and happiness. Peace, joy, freedom. This is, how, how do you attain to these? It's when you have the life of Christ, you're, you're happy with Christ, you, you're living the life, you, you have confidence. There's, there's a scripture that I had somewhere in my notes, I lost it, but it says about this is how you know that you are confident in Christ, you know, because, oh, this is how we know that we belong to the truth. 
the certainties in our heart. Remember the apostles in the book of Acts, chapter 5, after they have been beaten for Christ? Were they sad? Were they miserable? Oh, mommy, come to me. No, it says they rejoice. This is not normal thinking. Uh, would you be rejoiced if somebody would beat you up? <laughs> Probably not. But in that case, they were rejoicing. Why? Because of a holiness, that separation for Christ, that closeness with, with Christ. Amen. And lastly, we must be holy because without holiness on earth, we will never be prepared to enjoy heaven. Think about it. It just makes sense. You're all logical people, intelligent people here. Revelation 21, 27, nothing impure will ever enter heaven. That's serious. Nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful. So how will we ever be at home and happy in heaven if we die without the desire to be holy on earth? On earth? There's no desire to be holy on earth, to seek the Lord. There's no, not this, this kind of heart. Will I be fitting in heaven? Am I really ready to go there? You know, heaven, let's talk about heaven a little bit here. You know, if praying, reading the Bible, singing songs is boring, Sunday is a burden. And for some Christians, it is. We can see it in, in the eyes and the face of people that when we preach. Remember something. <laughs> Sorry to say that, but that's, that's a reality. I, I'm not pointing finger. Don't come and ask me who, who, who. But seriously, remember, heaven is a never-ending Sunday. Because the people of God will be in heaven. There will never be rest day or night. And they will constantly sing the praise of the Lamb, singing, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty. So, one of the old writers of old says, How could an unholy man or woman find pleasure in an occupation such as this? So if we have lost the joy of your salvation somewhere, the Bible says in Hebrew, how can we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? If we lose, Jesus says something else. He says, you started well, but you have lost your first love. And I believe that sanctification, the, the, if, if you want me to give you a formula for sanctification, I'd give you one. Sanctification, and this is a revelation. I believe this is a revelation that was given to me this morning in my home before I left. Sanctification, personal sanctification, is like the ma marital relationship, but with Jesus. Think about it, you will, you will get it. It's exactly the same thing. You must maintain it. If you love one another, everything is easy. You know, living a sanctified life, singing, praising, everything, if it's done in the love of Christ, is wow. True or not? Yes. So, think about it. Are you pursuing holiness? Would you please stand? There's no condemnation here. There's a call to find the joy. And like we read in uh, Joshua, sanctify yourself because tomorrow the Lord will do wonders. So that's what we are looking for. This, this sense of wonder, this sense of awe. Perfecting holiness and the fear of God and the reverential relationship with the Lord. In love, with Jesus, are you pursuing personal sanctification? How much do you know about this holiness of which we talk about today? So I'm calling you today to consider your ways and search your heart. 
And this message should lead you on your knees to pray. Do you think you feel the importance of holiness as much as you should? Do you want to attain more Christ-likeness through pursuing personal sanctification? Do you feel today a real hard desire to, to be holy? Do you want to be a partaker of the divine nature? It's easy. Go to Christ. Don't delay. Don't, mainly don't try to change yourself. It's not working. I'll stop this, I'll quit doing this, and no, it's not working. Go to Jesus and ask the help of the Holy Spirit and say to him, Holy Spirit, make me like Jesus. I want to see Jesus. I want to be at home with Jesus. I want to be prepared to enter the glory that you have prepared for us. And I understand and I am convinced that without this personal, this sense of pursuing personal sanctification, it's not helping me to prepare myself. I want to be happy in heaven by being happy on earth with you, Lord. This common pursuiliness, it's not optional. It's not occasional, but it must be our lifelong pursuit. Lord, as we enter this week, fasting and prayer, this season, let it be a new life, a restoration of this desire, striving for pursuing you more intentionally. And I believe that our goals, our blessings, our success, or the things, materials of this life will take place by themselves. You said, seek the kingdom of God first, and all of these other things will be given above to you. So we believe that, Lord, this morning, and we say, Lord, bless us through seeking holiness. Make it positive, make it joyful, make it an experience uh, motivated by our love for you and our desire to know you more. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.